Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can import a 2D animation sequence into DaVinci Resolve 16 so that we could use it for title sequences and the like inside of a fusion composition. So one example I've gone ahead and done is brought in a pixel art character, which is just going to be a series of sprite images, and loaded that into our fusion compositions. So right now it looks something like this, where our character is able to walk onto the screen with one animation, idle with another animation, and then walk off the screen with a third animation. And you might notice I have this split into separate fusion composition clips. So when you have multiple animations that you want to use, I found two decent ways in order to do that. One is to have separate fusion compositions, where in each one you define the exact frames that you want to use for that animation, whether it's a loop or not. And the other option is to, from the start, have the correct sequence of images loaded into DaVinci Resolve so that you only need to use one fusion composition. In other words, already having the exact animation you want to occur in DaVinci Resolve created before you load it in. So although you can see here that I included both the animation and the title that flies onto the screen in the same fusion composition, I would recommend in practice you actually separate them into separate clips so that they can be edited individually and moved around as you need them. So if you want to load in an animation to a fusion composition, open up your effects library and bring a fusion composition to the timeline. By default this will be 5 seconds in duration. So now you can click on the fusion composition and go over to the fusion page of DaVinci Resolve and you should have nothing but a media out here. So if you look at my media pool, you can see that I've already gone ahead and imported an animation as one item inside of the media pool. So let me go over to the list view so you can kind of see that when you import a series of images that all have the same name and they're numbered, so in this case animation girl underscore zero two fifteen, they'll be combined into one media pool item. So basically what we're looking at here is a series of 16 frames that is our animation. And when we bring this into our fusion composition, we can define which frames we want to actually use when it's playing back as the video effect. Another way would be to have each of your animation clips separated into their own individual frame groups. So for instance, we could have animation girl right and then underscore zero through three, and then that would be a walking right animation. So if we look at my desktop in the folder where I have all of these animation frames, you can see that for this girl there is a walk down, walk left, walk right, and walk up animation. So in this particular case, they're not separated into their own animations. So a better option if you wanted to use this kind of thing in DaVinci Resolve would be to separate each animation into their own frame groups. So here you can see I've brought in animation girl right, one, two, three, and four. So if you group them like this, there'll never be any confusion for what the animation is and you won't have to define which frames you want out of that animation group because each group is one action or animation. So in the media pool, I'm going to go back to thumbnail mode and then I'm going to drag these four frames into the media pool. So when I do that, it creates one image group. We can see going into the list view again, we have animation girl right 01 through 04. So now I can show you the advantage. If you don't have your animations grouped into their own individual actions, then when you add it as a media in, you'll have to define which frames you actually want to use for the video clip you're trying to create. So now if I take the media in, I can feed that to media out here. And what you'll notice if I play through the frames, and I'm going to check loop here so that we can see it on repeat, is that it's gonna cycle through every single frame in that group. So you can see here, it's doing all of the animations at once, and that's probably not going to be what you want. Now, if instead of importing sprite actions, like walking or attacking, uh, you were importing an actual full animation already created, uh, then this would be fine. You would just import all the frames from another program like Adobe Animate and load that into DaVinci Resolve like this. And then if it needs to play back in that exact sequence, you're good. Uh, but in this case, we might want to use only one of these actions, such as move right. So you can see here if I go through the frames that move right starts at frame 8 and goes frame 9, frame 10, frame 11, and then stops at 12. So I need to use the trim function over here for media n to cut away the frames that aren't move right. So that would be everything after frame 12 here and everything before 8. So actually the out should be set to 11 and then you can see the count for the frames that are actually being included here is 4, 
So each of those animations have four, and that should be correct. And we can test this now by going back to frame zero, hitting space, and watching the loop. So that does technically work, uh, but it would have been much easier if we had just pulled in animation girl right over here, which already has the exact frames that we want, and we don't have to mess around with trim, so I could just feed that into media out here, go back to frame zero, hit loop so that it cycles, and then go ahead and hit space, and we're already done, we don't need to do any trimming. So more than likely, if you're importing an animation from Pixar, Asprite, or Adobe Animate, then you probably don't have one frame of actions for every frame of video that's going to be occurring. What we can do to get it to its proper speed is to add in a time speed node. So we can find that by right clicking, going to add tool, miscellaneous, and time speed. So now we just need to move this time speed node between the media in and the media out so that we can adjust the speed at which the frames are being fed to the media out. So you can obviously see the speed function here. If we want to slow the rate down to, let's say, a quarter speed, then we can do 0.25, and then it should be four times slower. So let's go back to frame zero and hit space. And what you'll notice is that by default, there's a little bit of a ghosting effect or a blend for the interpolation mode. So that can be a desirable effect. I think it does look sort of cool. But if you just want it to play the exact image um, for that frame, rather than kind of ghosting the previous frames, then you can change the interpolation mode from blend to nearest, and then that'll be playing the animation only with the exact frame that the video is currently on. So if I hit space now, we have a normal walk cycle animation here. And one thing, you may notice every so often that when you are testing the playback of your animation in the Fusion tab, that sometimes it'll skip a frame every now and then. Um, that's partially due to Resolve kind of being slow in the processing. So if you want to make sure it's okay, then you can go over to the Edit tab and uh, play it back for part of the animation where this blue line up here at the top indicating that it's completely pre-rendered and it should play back correctly. So you can see here that the animation is actually fine, even though it may have given you the indication that it was a little off before. So one more thing I want to point out is that when you're working with low resolution pixel art or similar low resolution files, that you may notice that when you go over to the edit mode to actually view your video, that it starts to look quite bad, unlike the original image. Usually in programs like Resolve or Unity, uh, this is due to how it processes the image and adds filtering on top of it. So if you're working specifically with uh, a low resolution pixel art image, then it's probably a good idea to take your fusion composition and for the media in, actually feed that into a 3D image plane uh, before modifying it with time speed and media out. And when you have it on a plane, uh, you can change the settings of that image plane in order to make it look better in the final output. Also, instead of the final media out being the size of the original media in, it will actually be the size of the video frame. So the media out will actually look more like the frame of the final video. So if we want to add an image plane, we can right click, do add tool, go to 3D and then image plane. Uh, whenever we have a 3D node, we're going to need to render that with a 3D renderer. So I'm going to click renderer 3D over here on the toolbar. And then with renderer 3D, we're going to want to feed that into the media out. So now for the data that's feeding into image plane, I believe we can just take the time speed and put that in there. And now we need to scroll out so that we can see the full frame because we're no longer looking at a 32 pixel by 48 pixel frame, but we're looking at the final video output, which is 1920 pixels by 1080. And you can see that the image has basically been scaled up to that size. If you go to the edit mode, you can see that it is a lot cleaner now. So generally speaking, I would think that you would not want a pixel art character like this to be taking up that much of your screen. So an easy fix if you want it to be shrunken down for your purposes is you can go into the image plane and you can take the scale over here on the transform tab and shrink it down. So I'm going to make it a scale of, let's say, 0.25. So moving on, you can have this character actually move across the screen rather than just being an animation loop by adjusting the transform of the image plane or any other location where you may want to adjust the transform. So what we can do to start is 
pick a frame where we want the character to be in the middle of the screen like it is now and add a keyframes for XYZ translation. So now if we want the character to walk onto the screen, we go back to frame zero and adjust the translation X, which will automatically set a new keyframe. Um, and then between frames zero and 30, it's going to walk onto the screen, kind of like so. Now after that, we'd still have an animation loop here. So what we can do on the edit tab is to go to the frame where the character has stopped completely after moving onto the screen. So that would be somewhere around this frame here. And then to use the slice tool with B in order to cut the fusion composition into two parts. So now I can click on the second part of the fusion composition, come in here and change the media in to a new animation. So what I'll do here is go back to the folder with all of the frames for this character and I'll just bring in animation girl frame 00 which is just the character standing straight looking down and then I'll drag that into the fusion composition nodes as a new media in. I'll cut out the old ones and I'll put the new one connected to time speed and leaving everything else the same. So now if we go and play through this fusion composition we have the first part so now if I hit play back on the edit tab, the first part has the character moving onto the screen. And then after that, the character just stands there. And now we might want the character to walk off the screen as well. So I'm going to pick an arbitrary point in time, use the slice tool with B again, and cut that into a new fusion composition clip. So now we'll go into this last part of the fusion composition and load in another animation. Oh, in this case, I guess we just want the character to move right again. So I'll bring back this animation, put that into the bottom, cut the media in three out for the facing down animation and feed this into time speed. So right now it doesn't seem to be reading it. So let's try that one more time. Animation girl over here, feed that into time speed. Okay, so the reason that the animation isn't playing is we need to actually set the global in out for the media in. Uh, and make sure that the frames listed here are actually included on the frames that we're trying to play. Um, so that needs to go up to 119 at least. Now the reason it's starting from frame 87 instead of 0 is because we made a cut from the original fusion composition, so it was still expected to have earlier frames, but those aren't being shown in the final timeline. And as far as the fusion composition clip is concerned, we cut away the frames that come before 87. So technically this should be fine, but yeah, just keep an eye on that global in out. So now if we go back to frame 87 here and play space through the loop here, it should be playing properly. Now we just need to set a transform animation so that the character can actually walk off the screen uh, during these last 30 frames or so. So I'm going to go to frame 87 here, and on the transform tab of the image plane node, we need to set uh, X translation, Y translation, and Z translation to have keyframes by checking the diamond. And now on frame 119, we'll have the character be fully off screen. And you may not see the character move up here in the preview window uh, if you have red nodes down here below. Um, so you may need to actually hit play in order for the animation to re-render up here. But the position that we're going to want for the final X translation is going to be way off the screen. So I'm going to make it something like 1.7. Okay, so if your global in and out is set properly and you hit play and it seems to be working all right. And note that with these nodes down here, the time speed image plane renderer, 3D and media out, that those should not be red. If they are red, then it may not be currently rendering the actual animation properly up there. So what you could do is try changing a setting real quick like interpolation mode to flow and then back to nearest in order to get it to re-trigger rendering the animation up here. Um, and just make sure that it is actually playing through right. So hopefully we should have something like this where we have the walking animation going and it looks smooth. But in order to make the character move off screen again, we're going to need to go to uh, frame 87 and enable the X translation at the bare minimum for keyframing and then go to the final frame where we actually want to set our value and we're going to take the X and move that off the screen. Once again, if it's not immediately rendering this in the preview, then check down below. Some of your nodes may have not rendered yet, so it might just have the character stuck in the middle, even though we're moving the character off screen here. 
So I'm going to move the value to something like 1.75 in order to mirror how it was at frame zero in the negative direction for the uh, first fusion composition clip. So now uh, the character should be able to walk off the screen is the idea here. So that should be occurring. And if all's gone well so far, then we can go over to our edit mode and watch the whole animation. So three technically separate fusion composition clips, but the only real difference is that we change the animation out on each of these clips, though each of them have the same node composition. So let's go ahead and hit play here. Um, note it may not render 100% smoothly in the timeline playback, uh, especially if the blue bar for pre-rendering isn't there yet. But you can hit play, give it a couple shots, and you should be able to basically get an idea of how it will look when you finally deliver your project to a mp4.move project when you render it. So the basic idea is there. The character walks onto the screen, looks at the camera for a couple seconds, and then walks off the screen. So really simple. But yeah, we should have the basic idea here in place. The character walks onto the screen, looks at the camera for a couple seconds, walks off the screen. Uh, you could basically use this with any animation as long as you can turn that animation into a series of PNG images. You should be able to import them into DaVinci Resolve straight up. And uh, if you need them to look good, uh, try feeding the media in into an image plane like we did in this tutorial. So that's pretty much going to be it for loading in an external animation into DaVinci Resolve, pixel art or not. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.